Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to hear your word today, may you speak into our hearts and into our lives that which you want us to hear. Amen. So we hear in this part of Mark's Gospel that Jesus goes again into the synagogue. So uh, we can only assume this is the synagogue that he's been visiting. And this time uh, the Pharisees are stepping it up. So we know the Pharisees have been watching Jesus. He's been challenged with his disciples eating uh, the ears of corn. Um, and so they're watching him. Now that they're, they're taking it to the next level, they are trying to catch him out. Of course, we know that Jesus perceives uh, what they're thinking in their hearts. Um, and in a sense, this is part of the whole plan to show those people around that there is a better way of living, that their Pharisees have made this very much into uh, very rigid laws which they are following, which in one sense is, 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 is what they interpreted uh, from the scriptures, but uh, it, they took it too far. And Jesus shows this with the compassion uh, on this man with a, a withered hand. So he goes into the synagogue and there is a man with a withered hand. And, and, and this just speaks volumes of what the Pharisees are doing. In Leviticus it tells us that um, people like this in their law can not go into the synagogue. So the Pharisees in effect have uh, planted this man there. A man who shouldn't be there by their, their law. And remember the Pharisees are very strict on their laws and yet uh, their hatred for what Jesus is doing is far greater. So they uh, have planted this man there and Jesus obviously sees him. He knows in their hearts uh, uh, what they are planning uh, but they're not saying this out loud. And so he's in the synagogue and he, he calls the man over and he uh, is speaking while the man is there to the Pharisees around and to all the others that are there as well. Don't forget there's, there's a lot of people in that synagogue. And so he asked them because uh, he asked them about the Sabbath and, and what they can do and what they've made it into. Remember uh, last week in last week's sermon, they were challenging Jesus, challenging them, challenging them about the Sabbath. That the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, and that uh, Jesus is even Lord over the Sabbath. So now Jesus is um, putting this into action, showing them. And remember, these interactions would have been with uh, the same people or, or around the same people that. that they definitely know what Jesus was saying and the message and so let's just try to understand a bit about what the Sabbath is to the Pharisees because it's, it's very hard to uh, to see what it is for us today today we say it's a day off uh, or a day of rest where we come closer to God but uh, for the Jews at this time it, it was really a reminder uh, also of uh, from creation to to their redemption the Sabbath was hugely important. Uh, it was also a reminder of their persecution and and the Exodus. It was it was theologically for them it was a it was a huge moment um, from the creation of the world, uh, reminding them of the persecution, of their um, the death uh, of their ancestors, the persecution of those while they were in Egypt. It reminded them of the Exodus. But it also reminded them of um, the Messiah that was to come and to restore the nation of Israel. So the Sabbath was, was a very important day for them. So 
um, that the observance of it had, well, was important but the Pharisees had made it into something else and it had become um, not a day of observance and remembrance it became a day in a sense of uh, wearing their badge of who they were and, and, and then being better um, than one of the other in their observance of it and how much their piety and how good they were serving the Sabbath but the Sabbath uh, as Jesus said was made for man and not man for the Sabbath and and in that being made uh, for man and that reminder um, of them of their history and that which was to come they had forgotten that the Sabbath always also pointed to others outside of Israel that these were God's chosen people they were the light of the world and instead what happened they had turned it into that they were children of the light <coughs> and that light was only for them and everyone else was excluded so they forgot about the rest of the world and that they were a shining light uh, uh, into the darkness but they had become children of the light they didn't want to share it and in, in that they also were trying to one-up themselves in their uh, religious observance and it was just absolutely wrong so Jesus was showing them the way and, and here he, he really did challenge them and challenged them of what they were doing with the Sabbath so he said on the Sabbath it is better to, to heal uh, and do good or to do evil in your observance are you going to let this person who remember they planted <laughs> um, suffer or are you going to heal them as God can heal and um, is it better to do good or evil let people live or let people die big big challenge massive they're trying to catch him out and he's come back and he's basically calling them out you're gonna let uh, not just this man but using this man as an example you're gonna let this man just uh, live his life and others suffer and even die just because it's a Sabbath because you're one up in yourselves against each other and look oh look how holy I am compared to these other people and look someone's gonna die in front of me but I'm not gonna do anything because I'm gonna then uh, lose my prestige in what I am doing and so Jesus has really challenged them back in in that and what was their reaction they were silent but <laughs> As we know, Jesus is, uh, he knows their heart. So even though they're silent, what um, what they have in their hearts, what they're, they're probably screaming out in their hearts, um, a kind of whole range of emotions here. So they were silent. So Jesus, all he, he did is tell the man to stretch out his hand, uh, his arm, and as he stretched it out, it was healed. So. In effect, Jesus didn't do anything. He just told the man to do something. Uh, well, you could say that he's done something there, but he didn't touch him. He didn't pray. He didn't. He just say, "Stretch out your arm," and his uh, arm and hand were fully healed there, right in front of the um, the Pharisees, right in front of everybody in the synagogue. Just after they'd been silent, and um, he was the one that healed. And in this healing. It points that Jesus uh, is beyond um, a normal human being. Miracles like that just don't happen. You don't say, stretch out your hand, and then your um, the hand is healed. There is authority there. So Jesus, in that moment, is also pointing to who he is um, and what authority he has been given and so Jesus breaks their rules of the Sabbath by showing compassion on this man these Pharisees didn't have compassion on this man they were using this man this man in the rules shouldn't uh, even been in the synagogue and um, they didn't pray for his healing in fact in their rules this man is excluded and uh, shouldn't um, be part of the society 
let alone be in the synagogue of worship but yet again Jesus has compassion but in this as well we we see Jesus's reaction and this is really the first time Mark does it he records and tells us that Jesus is angry of course he's angry it's a righteous anger these are the religious leaders of the day and uh, they have no compassion their hearts are hardened and this is in fact uh, what um, the Pharisees would say to each other that their hearts are hardened if they break the rules of the Sabbath and so by Mark uh, recording this that uh, Jesus is uh, saying that their hearts are hardened that he's again calling them out in in their observance of the Sabbath that they're trying to one-up each other and when someone gets something wrong they're saying you've got a hard heart and he's saying you've got a hard heart because you cannot care for this man who <coughs> is clearly suffering uh, and an and outcast in society your hearts are hardened so he's grieved and he uh, was angry and rightly so but what was their reaction what was their reaction to this yet again they don't go well this man is something special we're not quite sure what it is and who he is uh, but we will um, we will <coughs> go and um, investigate and talk to him and understand uh, why he's here how he can do these things no the Pharisees go out to the Herodians who were supporters of King Herod who was aligned with Rome and started to plan with them how to destroy Jesus now <laughs> This is um, unbelievable because they hated each other. These two sects hated each other. The, the, the Herodians were aligned with King Herod and Rome. The Pharisees hated Rome. They did not get on, but they found a common enemy uh, together in Jesus. So they came together and started to plan how to get rid of Jesus. And that's interesting that we got the Herodians of planning to get rid of Jesus as well uh, obviously King Herod is worried and uh, 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 worried about the coming Messiah we, we, we get that from the other Gospels from his father and still wanting to keep uh, their kingship so they come together and, and, and that's their reaction at no time uh, have we seen throughout the Gospel from Jesus starting his ministry that and all that he done the people had seen and believed and there were many people following and people were being called to follow Jesus uh, and, and Jesus was in a sense breaking all the rules and showing them a better way and the religious elite of the day could not see beyond the strict rules that they had um, in a sense misinterpreted and that's a uh, the danger for us in the church today that is uh, something that we have to be very careful of is the way that we read the Bible the way that we interpret it uh, there is a lot of grace but a lot of rules God is a God of love but God is also righteous what had happened with the Pharisees it that is that they just went down the law and the, the righteousness and the love and compassion had gone out Jesus it, we see is uh, both loving and compassionate and righteous we see that in this uh, in the recording here of what happened he's he's loving and compassionate to the man with the withered arm but he also is righteous he has his righteous anger against uh, the Pharisees he is both we can't um, be as Christians and as a church too much one way and too much the other and, and, and we do see that today so we also always have to uh, go and just check where we are instead of um, saying this is the way it is supposed to be that now a caveat to that there are some things that are just core and and we cannot change uh, but it's the way that we act in our hearts and so this is not an in a sense an external thing uh, it's very much in our hearts that the Pharisees their hearts were hardened and we have to make sure that our hearts don't get hardened that we are not dictating rules too much but we 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 hold both the righteousness and um, the grace of Jesus in those two basically tensions and, and sometimes that can be be hard 
in how we interpret that. And we can't go too much the other way of, of, of being too loving. If we went too much the other way of being uh, too much love, then we lose the righteousness uh, of God. And remember, God is both our judge and our redeemer. He is both. And so when we go the opposite way, uh, and, and loving too much and, and not calling people out to repentance, <laughs> and remember that's what Jesus came to preach, that the good news of the kingdom is here, repent and believe, that we have to um, hold these two and not go too much one way and too much the other. And, uh, and that's only to through the scriptures that we look in and in our relationship with God and looking at our hearts that our hearts have not become hardened and hearing these um, stories and testimonies of what happened and weighing ourselves against them so is your heart hardened are you following the rules too strictly uh, or are you going the other way in and giving out too much love and letting people just get away with their sin and the things that they're doing wrong and, and there's no repentance of their heart and changing of their life or are you holding that balance and that tension of both and not just as individuals but also as churches as well so let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you for Jesus showing us the way for challenging the, um, the Pharisees of that day. Lord, let your Holy Spirit challenge us as individual Christians and the churches that we belong. That we are not too much one and too much of the other, but we find that balance and sometimes that tension of being both righteous and loving, full of grace, but also knowing that one day you will judge us and we need to hold each other accountable. Lord, it is only through your help that we can do this. Amen.